I was driving the first night of the trip, and on the spur of the moment, I decided to pull over, um, just kind of stretch my legs for a second and get some fresh air. And a kind of unusual feeling for me anyway came over me of, um, you know, just kind of slight menace. After I sort of mentally noted that feeling, I noticed that there was a rock with a plaque on it. It said that that spot had been the site of a, a massacre in the Old West. You know, whether that feeling was a result of some leftover energy based on things that had occurred in that spot, I really couldn't say, but, but I didn't want to stick around and find out. And I got in the car and I took off and as I was driving off from that spot, that riff just kind of popped into my head. But yeah, that, that one spot where some very bad things happened on the side of the road in Arizona is uh, where the song Double Lips on the Road came from. You know you got to get away you got to leave the past behind But when you go off on a search for yourself You might not like what you find Because the devil Looks on the road Because the devil Looks on the road Nobody here knows who you are You needn't worry what they think But when you go off on a search for yourself It's left you standing on the brink Because the devil Looks on the road Because the devil Let's on the road. The name of the, the new Tiger Army record is V. Technically, the name of the album are symbols. It's V dot 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 dash. And I guess that's how you'd say it, although it's meant to be seen more than it's meant to be said. The dot 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 dash means V, the letter V in Morse code. V dot 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 dash was something that was used a lot during World War II, and it stood for victory. The new Tiger Army album was definitely influenced by my experiences playing solo, learning about roots music. I learned about all music and it made me a better musician, it made me a better player, it made me a better songwriter. And those things, um, I think indirectly, all wound up having an influence on this record. And a lot of the sonic stuff going on on the record, a lot of the background stuff was very inspired by by Joe Meek. He was basically this kind of mad genius and he went way out with effects. He was kind of pushing some of those boundaries earlier in the 60s. I read a lot about him and his life, his recording techniques. That was something that the producer Ted Hutt and I really bonded over, knew Joe Meek's work and was really excited about kind of pushing some of those boundaries. And it's funny because when you try to recreate Joe Meek's recording techniques, it's not a static thing, it's like a genie in a bottle that you're sort of unleashing. It's almost like a chemistry experiment. You're just, you're creating these conditions for a thing to happen and you're just letting it go and you don't know exactly what's gonna happen. World Without the Moon is a song on the new record um, that I wrote on that trip. It's inspired by the Ramones in a way, but it's also bigger than that. One of the things that always appealed to me about the Ramones was that you had this buzzsaw aggressive guitar, but there was also a lot of melody underneath it. You could hear 
pop melodies of the 1950s and 1960s and their music underneath the aggression. And I wanted to kind of embellish that style, sort of turn that element up in what's essentially like a Ramon style arrangement. So that's why, um, that's one reason that that song has the strings.